Welcome back to designing a website in Figma. In the previous episode, we have finalized the integrations page and made sure all of this is populated with content and that also it reacts on hovering. In today's video, we're gonna be focusing on the customers page and think about what actually should be there content wise and how we can design the best solution for that. So let's just quickly go over what the customer page in my opinion actually is and what needs to be done first. So we're gonna to have to to create some kind of a simple wireframe for this page. I think this is just gonna have to be, you know, a simple layout so that we can think about this visually before we go into high fidelity design. And in my view, the customer's page is where you wanna present what your customers have to say about your product. So in our case, because we are designing a fictional website for a fictional app, our customers would probably be companies or people that uh, would be using this app, you know, at work, at home, wherever. So, but you might say, but wait a minute, we have already created the page case studies where we present how people actually achieved, you know, success with our app. So why are we creating a page for customer? And that's a very good question. And in my view, I think what we are trying to do here is present, you know, more specific, concrete, people and any professional relationship that we have maybe established in order to present specific people rather than specific successes, right? So my thinking here is that we want to be able to offer our viewers our page visitors, the option to look at who actually uses this app and maybe see that somebody in a similar position, you know, career-wise is also using this and therefore uh, will help them identify with these customers and maybe help, you know, establish some kind of trust with our company, with our app. To summarize, I think it's good to have specific people featured on the website in order to establish trust with other people, other visitors. So yeah, so I think uh, what we could do here is create, again, this is not gonna be a surprise. If you've been watching this series, you know that we are using components and variants for creating content. So for example, in case studies, we have the case study preview component that is then used across this page. Additionally, we also have the integration preview component that we have created or finalized in the previous episode. Here is gonna be, you know, a bit similar. But I think that rather than having another one of these rather small elements on the page, I think we could have a rather large element that would go across the whole page or like would, there would be two of them next to each other. I'm not sure yet, right? So remember, we are just brainstorming here. Um, so I would do either do a full width layout or half half layout. Looking at this, I think that, that uh, half of the page might actually be a better solution for this case. So let me just do one thing. I'm gonna take the guidelines from this page. So I'm gonna enable Shift G. I'm gonna press Shift G to enable the layout grid. And then I'm gonna select this frame, go to layout grid, select that, copy and paste that into customers, right? So that we have these uh, here as well. So from this layout grid, you wanna make sure that you are creating elements that fit nicely within this layout uh, so that you have some kind of a visual system on, on your page. Uh, and it's just generally good to do because it's easy to navigate visually. All right, so here's the thing. I think we could do this. I think we could do like, this would be the component then you would get like a, the photo and avatar of the person. Um, remember from customer quotes, we have the customer photos already neatly prepared uh, like in this component format. So if you wanna find out how to create this component, because we will be using this component, go and watch the episode on customer quotes in this playlist linked below the video. All right, so I think we could have like customer photo that could be around right here. And then what I wanna do is, let me also duplicate this. This is just basically the structure, right? So then I would say that we could get like a name. Okay, so you get a photo, a name maybe, and maybe also you would get uh, a logo for for the company that they actually work for, okay? So that you can easily identify the person. And maybe, just maybe, you, we could also add social media, you know, accounts. But I'm not sure if that's a good idea because it might get really cluttered 
And uh, after all, if you're really interested in, in you know, contacting someone and maybe so if you want to reach out to these people, probably you search their name on LinkedIn, right? So I don't think we necessarily have to specify that here. Um, might get a bit redundant, but maybe yes, maybe especially for like, and you have like specifically developers, oftentimes you want to link their GitHub account so that you can actually verify if these are the people that know what they are talking about. Okay, so, so here we have like the left side of the component and on the right side, what I would want to do is like um, a paragraph text essentially saying what the person has to say, right? So here the person would say, I've been using this app for two years and the results are great. I like using it blah, blah, blah. And that's what you would get here. And then because this is very, very closely related to uh, case studies, I think we could actually do uh, a bunch of just like maybe leave a space for like one or two case studies, probably just going to be one at most. So leave a you know, a place for a link to a specific case study. So let's say that we are working with company A, right? So company A as according to this specific case study achieved great success with our app. That's nice, but there's of course gonna be a specific person that's probably, that has been using this app. And that's probably the person that we're gonna, you know, feature right here. But this also means, uh, of course, logically, that this person is basically related to this case study, right? Because they're, they're gonna be representing a company and that's why we wanna link this specific case study if there is one. Uh, somewhere you know in this area of where we present the person so here's what we did we basically this is basically a low fi low fidelity wireframe or basic layout um, it's always great to do these because you then find out that maybe there are some things that you miss visually or spatially speaking actually here's like a specific example to be honest at first when i started wireframing this i thought this is going to be a better solution but arranging these objects right here I think that this is probably going to be the better solution the only thing that could change that is that if the text in this area would be too small then we would have to make this you know, wider or go all out to the full width that's possible but I think that's I think this is gonna be enough right so because these quotes are not gonna be uh, that long usually and here's a very interesting point so why do you think I placed the case study over here the case study link over here and not over here so if you remember what these actually represent since this represents the customer quote and what they are trying to say then anything related to their activity is going to be described here right anything related to the usage of the app is going to be described here and so then you have one side where there is the person and the other side where you get the usage of the app and then you have the case study so the case study does the case study relate more to the person or does it relate logically closer to the usage of the app right exactly so if you have a case study that is describes how a company used an app that's definitely more related to the specific usage of the app or of this to the specific experience of a customer than to the customers to themselves, right? That's also why any social media links I would think about placing right here, closer to the person and not closer to what they are actually describing, right? So you wanna, this is one of the most basic rules. I think I actually made a video on that. It's the law of proximity that things that, that are logically more connected together should go closer together spatially. And this is one of the examples, right? This is the reason why we place the customer's position right under their name and not over here. Okay, so I think we have outlined the basic structure. We have outlined what's the purpose of this page and what is going to be within one uh, customer component. And let's actually start creating this component. As usual, I think it's very likely that we're not going to be able to finish this within one episode. So definitely stay tuned for more if we don't manage to finalize this. But I think we could at least manage to prepare the basic structure. First of all, the customer photo. Let's use that right now i'm gonna go to assets and i'm gonna search for customer photo right so here's our customer and i'm gonna drop that right here i'm gonna be using this component instance to create the use within another component so we will be again doing nested 
component. And we have also been doing nested components in the previous episode. So you are definitely gonna understand what we're doing provided you have watched the previous episodes. Yeah, so here we have the person. Actually, let's go over here and check out what is the style that we are presenting this person with. You could actually reuse the quote component right we could create an instance of the quote component so i press alt and then drag i'm going to use this quote component that we have created a couple of episodes back um, and then i am going to move that all the way over here and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to detach this component so command option b and now i can work with these elements and rearrange them maybe so that's great so this is the current layout of the quote component it's responsive as you can see but here's a slightly different layout right so we're gonna have to we're gonna have to think about how we can rearrange this first of all i'm gonna select this auto layout which is the name and position i'm gonna i'm gonna press command uh, left bracket to move that right below the photo right because according to this layout we have the photo name position that's precisely what we need here. But then also I'm gonna press enter and then under text, I'm gonna make sure it's left aligned because that's what we are doing right here, okay? All right, and probably what we're gonna have to do is because we have like elements on the left and right, we're gonna have to change the direction of the auto layout from going vertically to horizontally. So when I do that, you can see that this happened. We have the name and last name on the left side and the quote on the right side, but the photo didn't move. And the reason why the photo we didn't move is because we are using absolute position for this photo so let's just continue let me take the quote component and make it larger so here's the thing let me place it here enable the uh, the guide so shift G with this selected and let me actually extend that all the way to six columns in terms of width so yeah there you have it right you now probably uh, realize why using this width for one customer would be probably too much so i think this is definitely the way to go in terms of you know the size of the element i'm gonna also select the photo and press option a and then probably 24 from the left so that it aligns with this element we're gonna have to probably adjust that later but we get a component that does this a responsive quotes component that's great and here's the thing we're gonna have to create a couple more stuff so first of all we're gonna have to create a component for the company logo and why do we need to create a component? Because that's something that's probably gonna change quite a lot. So let me just show you an example that's very uh, right here next to what we are working with, the integration preview. So we have eight instances of the integration preview component. As you can see, there are different companies, right? You get different integration logos and this integration logo component is nested here and then we are able to easily switch the integration logo by simply using a dropdown and it change this very easily, right? We are basically taking an object-oriented approach, an object-oriented approach, where if you compare these two situations, so that's a company logo within an integration component and then a company logo within a quote or customer quote component, that's very similar, right? So you might get multiple people, person one, person two, and then multiple companies, right? This also means that we're probably gonna have to, whatever we have here for the integration logo, we're actually gonna have to have for the customer photo as well, right? That's why we are using this component. And that's why this quote component all the way over here is also using an instance of this component, right? This component, right, is nested within this component and because we are basically reusing this, then this component again is nested here. So what I think we could do is actually create a component called customer logo, right? Or customer company logo. The equivalent of this, but for entire companies, right? Let me start by using a frame tool. So I'm gonna press F and then I'm gonna create a component that is 140 by 70 so that's 140 by 70. i'm gonna rename this frame to customer company logo right it's gonna be a customer company logo then i'm gonna go over here and click this or press option command k option command k and then we get a component from this i'm gonna also add a variant and then 
I'm going to also make sure these go horizontally with that over here. And also I'm gonna select this whole component and under properties, type in company. So we are going to get a property called company with values default and variance two, except these are gonna be company A and company B. I'm going to then use text tool and I'm gonna create a placeholder for these logos because these are fictional companies. Um, we also get fictional logos. So we might replace this later, but for now let's go for company A. I'll probably detach this text style, go for black minus 5%, place that over here company A and then company B. And we could create maybe a placeholder for like for the logo. So I'm just going to add a circle. And yeah, we have created the company, you know, the customer company logo. And now we can actually reuse this in our component. That's right here. So let me also do one thing. Let me also change the background of this to black and then like 10% opacity or maybe even less like 5% opacity. And after that, I'm going to go over here and then go to assets and search for this component that we have just created. So customer company logo is right here. Let me place that right below our layout. And this is the component instance. And I'm going to take this component instance, command X, select this quote, auto layout and press command V. So because we have this entire thing as one giant auto layout that is horizontal. This is going to automatically place this logo over here, but we want to group this. Basically, we want to make sure that there is an auto layout within this auto layout, similar to this situation right here. Uh, that is going to automatically group this thing and this thing together below each other. So I'm going to just move that over here by pressing command left bracket, select these two, shift A, and then change the direction, right? So that's how we created this situation right here. Uh, this frame 22, I'm going to rename that to personal details, right? Because this is related to the person as discussed previously. And this is going to be fill container. And this name and position is going to be fill container as well. Right. So now that when we actually resize this, it responds accordingly. We're probably going to have to readjust this later, but for now, this is uh, for now, this works. This is also a bit challenging to implement. So the personal details need to have some kind of a, a padding above the auto layout, right? Above themselves. But on the other hand, this quote does not. So what I'm going to do here is actually I am going to take this whole auto layout and then I'm going to reduce the top padding to 24. But there's a problem, right? An obvious problem. The person hides the information. So the trick is for this and similar situations is to actually select this personal details auto layout and then go to independent padding, individual padding under top padding, which is going to add, let's say 100 or 96 actually to be exact. So right now, as you can see, the padding is still intact. So on this quote, you get this kind of padding, right? You have 24 on all sides, but at the same time, you get two sub components of this, two child elements, and one of them is specifically adjusted for the photo kind of overlapping over that area, right? So I hope this makes sense. That's how we were able to achieve this layout. So what we have created is we have established basic outline for our component. We have established a structure and then we're going to add the case study link, maybe some more details, but all that we're going to do that in another episode of designing a website in Figma. So stay tuned for the next episode and see you soon in the next one.